Thank you so much for coming to class. I am glad that you and I get this time together. So today I'm gonna to be talking about um, a concept that you got in class that I'm just gonna review again because it's powerful. Um, and it is a, it's a different way to think about um, why someone who has a lot of capacity feels really drained. And it's the concept of the drinking straw versus um, right, a fountain, um, a fountainhead, a mainspring. And for those of you, well, first of all, you know, if you're watching this, you're part of my posse. So that means that you, chances are a high achiever and chances are you're doing great things in the world, right? And what ends up happening is that you find that you have a greater capacity than a lot of other people that you have. And every leader in every, in every business, in every country, in every role, at some point feels that too many people are taking from them, that they are just feeling dried out, burnt out, right? There's a lot of things that, and that's because they forget, they forget. And so I'm just gonna kind of call out the prosperity mindset and walk you through what that is, right? And the first part is, is that 99% of people have been taught that they should be consumers. That um, it's, we have this problem in lots of countries, in lots of ways um, where we were taught to consume, we weren't actually taught to investigate within. So, right, if you have a problem, take a pill. If you have a problem, take a pill. It didn't say, if you have a problem, you should investigate. Why does your head hurt? Uh, why do you keep getting headaches every Wednesday when you have to go to school? Why does your stomach hurt when the school bus comes, right? And it is that we were taught to consume. Let's have, right, and distract. So lots of people, when you think about this as a, as a drinking straw, they are really going through the day. Most of them are going through the day and just trying to suck some energy out of all of these things in their life, right? So they're sucking up some social media. They're sucking up some thing of this, right? They're sucking up television. They're sucking up a Netflix series. They're sucking up shopping. They're sucking up eating too much. They're sucking up whatever. They're looking in this consumption model. And that, when everyone has a straw and they're looking for something to suck up and you have a lot to suck up, they're gonna come at you, right? And then people get weird and mean and crabby because they're like, man, these people just feed on me. Yeah they were taught that way and so right you they also sometimes will do it because of that's agency right well there's no other way to do it of course I'm going to go out and look for this I'm going to copy this idea I'm going to instead of thinking my own right I'm going to steal your presentation instead of using my own and they do that for lots of things um, they also have often have a reservoir of not enough that they are looking for something outside of themselves to fulfill the reservoir of not enough interior. So when you're thinking about this, I want you to think about capacity, uh, what your role is, and, and really identify that you are a mainspring. So when we think about a mainspring, one of the things, so what is a mainspring? A mainspring, right, is something that comes from a deeper aquifer, right? And so some of you may be talking about that as a divine nature, right, that I'm, and my energy is from divine. For those of you who have done meditation a long time, right, this is the place where you get inside and you get to the deeper part of you, right? But a mainspring in a community is, right, something that flows, it flows from a deeper aquifer and it is flowing for the purpose of energizing other non-competing ecosystems. And it's, it's sending its, sending its water down the way so that the other ecosystems can thrive and that by those ecosystems thriving, they actually bring back value to the mainspring in some way. So when you're thinking about, boy, all these people are taking from me, it is also what's your role, right? What's your role as a mainspring? If you are that mainspring and chances are you are, it is to say, how are you teaching and training people to not just suck on the straw to try to get their value out of you, right? It is to say, hey, I'm a mainspring. Um, 
and that I'm here to try to energize you in your ecosystem to be able to thrive. So it's investing differently. And it's investing in a ways that allow them to invest in their own ecosystem, their own way to be their own wellspring. And that flow is what is valuable. And what happens, so it, it, let's just use a mentor-mentee conversation, right? I remind everyone of, I only have 32 in a year, but out of the 32 people that I'm mentoring every year, um, that I remind them that they are, I'm investing in them so that they can invest something back. And, and I ask them at the beginning of the item, what do you bring in value back to me and my community? Um, that if I'm going to be investing in you, what are you bringing back? And what will that look like? And how can I measure that? So if I, if I invest in you, what will you invest in to the things that I'm invested in? So the other part to that is, is that flow is a val, right? It's a value. One of the things that it is beneficial to me to be able to mentor someone else, one, it's an honor and a privilege, but it is a way to keep my education, to keep my lessons, to keep the wisdom that I have flowing. And that's the benefit to the mainspring is that they can share their knowledge. And what that also means is that there's not a glut. So when water gets imprisoned in some area, it becomes not usable. So you want flow, you, you want things to move, you want to learn new things, you want new experiences. So there is a benefit to a mainspring to be able to keep flowing and you want to flow into those existing non-competing ecosystems. So I don't, I'm not here to grow another version of myself. So I'm not gonna try to grow another financial advisor because I don't want, uh, that. that's not a positive ecosystem for me. Um, but can I grow a financial advisor in a different category? Sure, sure. So think about that for yourself. You're not there to build an identical version of you. So you're looking for, um, are you able to tap into your own aquifer? And what is that for yourself? And what is that concept? And knowing that everyone, um, it, and the, the, the story, like when I tell it in class, right, I think about all these ducks with straws, right? And that's all their job is to do. If you throw that seed out, they're all gonna crawl over there and peck it all up because they go value, value, value. Um, and, and so it, that, that will always be that way because you're brilliant. So, and because you're brilliant and you have a lot of experience and you're charismatic and you're very interesting, everybody wants to be part of that. But that's not your role. Just because they all are gonna come flying at you to try to suck energy from you because they want to fill their reservoir doesn't mean you have to um, be freaked out about it, that you decide what is there. And remember, any mainspring is only giving overflow. They're never actually giving their own substance away. They're only giving overflow. It's easy to give. You, you do, I don't have to be panicked when 20 people want to hold me hostage after every class because they're trying to gather a question or something. I'm going to give them what is available, but I'm not going to uh, miss my own life because I'm giving. So when you're thinking about that, um, you want to remember that you have to refill, right? I have to refill and I have to flow out. So as a mainspring, that's what you have to focus on is really focusing in on your fountain um, that you may have a greater capacity. So when I look at a lot of times we see people who only have this much capacity and yours is a 50 gallon drum, it's easy to start stacking those up to go, boy, they're not much to fill. I'll just fill all of them. Um, but that doesn't actually teach them to be their own mainspring, right? So I will remind people what my role is, is as a mainspring that I'm there to energize, I'm there to energize, and I'm there to energize their them so that they can create their own non-competing ecosystem and that I want their ecosystem to thrive. So I'm going to invest in that leader. That's why so many of my um, mentees are leaders 
is because I want them to create what they're going to lead. And they need somebody to be able to do that more than the person on the street needs me. Right. So that's why if you're in trail driver, or trail uh, trailblazer class or some of these other pieces, that's why you're a leader. Um, so we are going to look at how do you invest in that? And then how do you actually tell people that methodology? Right. That the point of prosperity is a circle. Right. So I'm going to be investing in you so that you also bring value back to my ecosystem. And what is the value that you bring back to my ecosystem? And sometimes that's me um, being able to tell your story or me learning with you um, that you can use all the beautiful things that are in my mind. But if I walk this road with you, I'll learn something, too. So there is that piece. So when you are thinking about this um, idea, um, don't get angry that when you throw something down, everybody clack, quacks towards it and they just start sucking it up like a straw. That's what they've been taught to do. And that is the part that you have to really invite is for people to investigate within. What are the tools within you that you can use to solve this when I'm not standing here? Um, I would have I, a lot of times this question that mentees get from me is, is that that I go, well, you're brilliant. How were you going to solve it first? Or I will say, what are the things that are working well? First, so I hear the problem, I'll identify the problem and I'll say, well, what what is working well? And, and so that's really getting them to kind of think those skills through, because that is what you hope for, right? And when you're training other leaders is that they lead and they lead well. Um, and then really question the, question those, those relationships to go, what is in the reservoir that feels unfulfilled? Um, what is it that you don't think you have enough of? And if it's that you don't have, and sometimes that helps a lot because it will give them agency. Oh, now that I've identified this reservoir of not enough, um, how do I build agency so that I feel like I have enough energy to manage that, that fulfillment? And then I don't have to look at that for the people around me that I can do that from within. So when you're walking through this process, it is in a prosperity mindset, a very different model. And you hear it from me often, and I'm going to say it again. You only have one job one job every day, it is the same job. It is the same target. And that target every day is to be well within and to know what that is. Now, all of the world that surrounds us is going to be filled with mayhem and commotion and scuttlebutt and all of the things. It is, it is a fire pit of craziness in the world every single day, every country, every business, every corporate environment, there is, there is people shedding their skin every second of the day. And there is terrible decisions being made all of the time. None of those are your problem. Your number one item every day is to say, there is peace within me. There's peace within me. I have an internal reservoir to be able to go within. And you see me say that with that archer, right? You have to pull that arrow back and you have one target to hit and one target only. And that is to be well within. And you have to be able to learn how to hit that target in all of these ridiculous and perplexing situations of the world around you. But the world around you is outside. You have to manage the inside world. And that is your mainspring. And your mainspring always has overflow because you're a high achiever. And you, you always have something to give. If you feel like you don't have enough to give, then you have to go back in and really start to identify what, what's, who's, who's, how many people are, are, are tackling off of these things because you might not need that many. So when you're thinking about what you're doing, take some time. Be thoughtful, be generous, be kind because you are learning a process that is the most important. And to take some time back, to, to go back and really think about what is happening for you is powerful. It is powerful work and you'll never regret doing it. So 
go back in and look at your own mainspring, go back in and look at your own ecosystem and go back at how many people with those little straws are trying to suck off your, off of your well. And if you think your well is dry, we have a problem. And, and if you are the one that is actually trying to take off of other people, we have a problem. It, and that's really going back in and learning what is your, what is your reservoir and what is in there. And, and a lot of people just start kind of cleaning it out. Um, they kind of drain the pond and then they clean out the pond and then they refill it. So it'll be interesting to see what you choose. And the last piece I want to give people is that even if you are the mainspring and you feel as though you have been knocked out and you have nothing, it's only a matter of time before every spring starts bubbling. So if you need the time, take it because something will bubble up. And then as you start paying um, close attention to that, you'll start bubbling more. And you'll start to feel that you have more agency, more energy, that it'll start to kind of fill in the blanks, right? Um, that you aren't just feeling empty and full of woe. Um, someone who is a high achiever will always look to achieve again. So even if you're burnt out now, you won't always be. If you've been burnt out for three months, don't worry. It'll, it'll come over. Somebody who's fried themselves all the way to the core, they need nine months to recover. And in some things, they'll need 18 months to recover. So if you are tapped, this isn't a weekly. It's not, it's not fixed in a week. But it will come back because that's your natural state. And your natural state is to be able to focus right on the peace that's within, not focus on the chaos that's without. And that chaos that's around you doesn't belong to you. What belongs to you is the peace. And that peaceful part within you is what you have to focus on. So have a great day. Thank you for coming to class. Thank you for being willing to find your own strength and your own divining rod towards your own inner self because it's beautiful. And what I like about beautiful things is they never get old. They never get old. And I'm never going to get tired of hanging out with you. So thank you for showing up. And I will see you in class. Bye.